This is Time Warner Cable's Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Rick Garman. Rick is a survivor. He is a survivor of esophageal cancer. Sadly, a friend of mine whom I grew up with did not survive. We lost him about four to six weeks ago. And uh, I've been hearing a lot about esophageal cancer, and now you have as well. Talk to us about this disease, sir. It is one of the fastest growing cancer diagnoses in the United States, and for men, it is the fastest growing cancer diagnosis. Why? 600% increase over the last 35 years. Why? Uh, it's, I believe it's because uh, a lot of the food that we eat, mm -hmm. our diet has changed so severely. Uh, esophageal cancer is often caused by acid reflux. Mm -hmm. So bad food in mm -hmm. your stomach causes acid to splash up in the esophagus, mm -hmm. and it damages the lining of the esophagus. And then what happens? And then it, it goes through a progression. So uh, it's not guaranteed for everybody just because you have heartburn, you're gonna get the next step. But you're more likely to get a condition called Barrett's esophagus, which is where the lining of the esophagus starts to change in response to the acid being thrown at it. Mm -hmm. And it uh, undergoes a, a change to become more like the lining of your intestine, mm -hmm. which is built to handle the it's acid. Protective. Yeah, exactly. And uh, eventually, if in a perfect world, it would sort of stop there. Mm -hmm but uh, the cells just often don't know when to stop and it can become uncontrolled growth. Uncontrolled cellular growth is what we call cancer. Which is yeah, what happened to you. Exactly. Now you were lucky. My friend, uh, when he went to the doctor, he was at stage four. Mm -hmm. And you were at stage 1B Correct. in large part because you had gone and you had learned of your Barrett's esophagus diagnosis. Yes. I, was, I really am one of the lucky mm -hmm. ones. Only uh, fewer than one in five survive longer than five years once diagnosed with this disease. Mm -hmm. And that's because there often are no symptoms. Mine right. was a lack of a symptom that I happened that's to pay attention to. Tell us about it. So I had had heartburn most of my adult life. And somewhere in my mid-30s, I noticed that the heartburn had stopped. I was still having the acid reflux, but the pain from the okay. heartburn stopped. And I paid enough attention to think, well, uh, yeah, this I'm not having right, the heartburn right. anymore, but something's weird about yeah. that. So I went to the doctor, got diagnosed with the Barrett's, which is, again, that lining had changed. Right. And so it was still happening. I just wasn't feeling it. Right. Um, and so you were being monitored. I was, I was being monitored. So most people, however, for most people, there are no symptoms until often the tumor gets so big that it is causing problems for swallowing. Right. And by that point, it's stage three, stage four, and often at that point, it is, there's not right. much you can do about it. Well, you're taking a stand against esophageal cancer. Yes, Coming up on May 2nd, very soon, there will be an event at the Hilton Los Angeles Universal City, of course, yep. we know it well, it's an icon. Um, it is the Stories to Save Lives event. Tell us about it. So we are getting brave men and women to raise money for for the opportunity to repel down the 24 stories of the Hilton Universal City. Oh so they're going to be going from the roof down to the pool, 24 stories repelling like you would repel down the side of a I mountain. I love that. I want to do that. Yeah, okay. Spider-Man. Then come on and exactly. do it. We still have, we still have room for okay. people to, to uh, sign up and do it. I got scared thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. I am terrified of heights. Yeah. I am not doing the repel myself. I figure I already did the scary part. I had cancer. Well stated. I don't have to go down the side of a right. building. But we're doing this because it's sort of a big splashy event that it can hopefully draw attention to what causes this disease because unlike a lot of other cancers, right. uh, breast cancer as an example sure. is a great example, which is often kind of a, a spin of the genetic wheel. There's mm -hmm. things you can do to get diagnosed early and monitor right. your health and things like that and that's critically important for all cancers. But with esophageal cancer, it is preventable. If you know what causes it, you're paying attention to your body, you're being an advocate for your own health, you can keep yourself from getting this disease. And I have to tell you, I highly recommend <laughs> I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you do whatever so you can. if you want to learn more about the event coming up on May 2nd, please sign on to the website storiestosavelives.org. Uh, congratulations. You'll be with us for a long time, I am sure. My name is Brad Pomerantz. This is Time Warner Cable's Local Edition.